about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Hallelujah. Listen, let me start tonight with a word of hope. There is somewhere God is taking you and no power in hell will stop it. I want you to believe what I'm saying. The Bible says, Now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet. Take your eyes away from the temporary setbacks, no money, no ministry, no influence, all that is rubbish. The Bible says they looked unto him. That's the key. He lifted the brazen serpent and he says to look. Take away your eyes for all those who looked at the serpent, the one on the ground could not have an effect on them he said if it be thou bid me come and peter set his gaze but the winds were still boisterous and he turned his eyes you know that song turn your eyes upon jesus who knows that song his wonderful face and the thing of earth will grow strangely deep in the light of his glory and grace. I'd like you to prophesy to yourself in one minute. No force is capable of hindering the purposes of God over my life. Shake away unbelief, shake away limitations. I may not look like it, but the Spirit of God is doing something. You may not feel like a man of God, but the anointing is within your horizon. There's no plan of darkness that is able to thwart the purposes of God over your life. Can you prophesy to yourself? Go into the place of destiny by the anointing by the power of the Holy Ghost there is no power no force the gates of hell does not sustain the ability to stop me I decree and declare that I am rising by the Spirit Hallelujah This, this is already a message to someone because you see brothers and sisters this life has a way of taking away your gaze from Jesus some of you had to trek to come here and while you were trekking the devil told you where is the grace you claim you have for prosperity some of you had to fight all kinds of battles to be here but let me tell you if your life were ordinary, the devil will not waste his time around you. There was something the spirit of the Antichrist saw with the star and began to manipulate Herod to look for where Jesus is. Satan has refused to let you go because there is something in your life and around your destiny that makes him uneasy. And in the name of Jesus, I declare to you again that no power, it's already too late, no power, no power of hell will stop you. You see, 
for as long as it is night you will continue to weep but when light comes this light we are talking about the bible says there were many lights buddhism has some light occultism has some light they manipulate things but the bible says he made two great lights great lights the lights that rule in the day and the lights that rule in the night when the sun shines you wonder if there are stars again all of a sudden the brilliance that is the same way god does not bless you by just prophesying to you alone he blesses you by getting you filled with his light you become so full you turn back and can't find darkness again the bible says in john chapter 1 listen carefully and verse 5 it says the light shineth in darkness the light the word that you have that has been brought to you by the spirit is capable of dispelling any darkness so brothers and sisters let me encourage you you may look around your life and not find any traceable evidence that rewards your hunger and your passion for god and the devil will want to lie to you to say for how long will you continue seeking him without a sign let me tell you this do you know in the spirit five minutes to your breakthrough it will still not be like it but all of a sudden he said in a moment in a twinkling of an eye your life will just shift and change in a way that will bless you that's how God lifts people please I want you to be very intentional about your expectation God is not a fool he doesn't call the seed of Jacob to seek him in vain creator of the universe what can you do what can you do over your life before you sit down psalm 45 shabrando zikatulia hasarabale psalm 45 the lord just put it in my spirit to prophesy over your life words are powerful realities are created through words 45 verse 12 it says and the daughter of tyre shall be there with a gift it says even the rich among the people shall entreat your favor there is listen i taught you something well we're, we're going to teach on something but it's just a grace that came on me now listen to me listen you see brothers and sisters everything in life that we know is bought with money is that true do you agree with me but do you know that money itself is a product that is bought with something come promise promise once a phone listen carefully and then I give him money this money can buy a phone do you agree what if it is money he wants what can I give him to buy money? The name of what you give that buys money is what the Bible calls true riches. True riches. It is true riches that can purchase unfaithful mammon and alongside with it buy every other thing. The peace, the joy, the influence. 
are we together there is something in this kingdom that buys every other thing on earth this looks like the highest most valuable thing when you possess this you can make any noise and ramble and talk rubbish but in the kingdom there are realities that we possess listen carefully and the bible says with it everything whether this whatever it is you can possess is is called the true riches there are seven of this spiritual capital one of them is called light we buy things with light the power light is capital in the spirit the anointing is capital in the spirit words are capital in the spirit in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands and I speak over you that in this season I program a climate of spiritual reality above you and I declare may it begin to call strange levels of lifting in your life may it begin to call strange levels of honor to your life may it begin to call strange levels of speed in your life we're going to sit down shortly let me pray for the grace for speed now listen be sensitive because the people the anointing will come on sometimes they can attempt to run physically so you hold them so they don't scatter everywhere right now i stretch my hands the grace that came upon elijah that caused him to overtake the chariot of ahas by this apostolic and prophetic grace i stand in the office of my call i shift you by speed enter a new dimension in the name of jesus speed 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 i prophesied in one day let zion be born i command speed speed in your finances speed in your spiritual life speed in every area of your life whatever level you have been in spiritually and you have refused to shift i stand by prophecy and i shift you to a new dimension new level of prophecy new level of revelation new level of encounters new levels of signs and wonders receive it in the name of jesus It is what is on you that controls what is around you are you hearing what I'm saying in this kingdom it is the spiritual climate above you I'm speaking by the spirit it is the spiritual climate above you that controls the realities that are captured in your life it takes more than desire it takes more than zeal again I'm speaking to you any climate over you that is drawing things in your life that are putting you in trouble any climate that is refusing you from rising you are a man of God with an anointing yet doors are not opening because there is a climate in the name of Jesus I command that climate to live your life now
down shortly lift your hands I want to pray on your hands not you just your hands it was with the hand Moses held the rod he says and with these hands you will do signs and wonders I stretch my hands to your hands and by the spirit I make contact with your hands may these hands carry straight fire fire for signs fire for wonders you lay these hands and change the destinies of men you lay these hands and speak the purposes of the kingdom everything these hands come upon I declare that it is anointed it will be an instrument of signs and wonders in the name of Jesus Christ please sit down if you can Just, just leave those under the anointing. Let's sit down. Habalato selika tobia. Sheke pasa barusi ya hasana balada bas. Elabarando sadele katia. Talabarato. Legete korati siya. Shalabarota sodo balada balada. Hallelujah. You see, if the power of God cannot come and change you, then you are wasting your time. Brothers and sisters, I am ministering to you what the Bible calls true riches. This is God's justice system. Oh, I didn't, I was not so educated. Oh, I was not this. I didn't have wealthy parents. But there is something that can come upon men and help them. You are receiving the help of God. God doesn't just help people by wishing. He puts something upon your life. I've taught you this. What is on you is what controls what is around you. Not what you want. Not what men say. They can talk nonsense from morning till night. If you ever turn and see strange results in your life whether you know it or not there is something controlling it if a man ever looks at you and says i want to bless you nobody has the heart to do it on his own no sir if as a man of god you ever call for a solemn assembly and people come there is something on you it's not about stories and nonsense What is upon you is what controls what is around you. I repeat, what is upon you? If you desire something around you and it's not there, don't look for it. Look for what must come upon you to bring that thing you desire. Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Much less love and beauty. Endless work Nothing in this world Can satisfy Jesus you're the count That will run dry Treasure of my heart And of my soul My witness, you are merciful. Redeemer of my past and present wrong. You're the holder of my future days. And all my days on earth, I will away. The moment that I see you face to face For nothing in this world is satisfied Jesus, you're the God that won't run dry Yes, you are the God that won't run dry 
other things can run dry. But Jesus, you're the car that will run dry. Jesus, you're the car that will run dry. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We are gathered here and we will always allow you to build, to change, to lift. Any spirit within this vicinity that is not of the Christ I stand here right now if there be any force any yoke any agreement upon anyone's life I speak right now be set free be released now every other influence on your life that is not of the Christ bringing you oppression programming failure to your life I stretch my hands and I command liberty right now in the name of Jesus please be seated God bless you mm. this is koinonia The anointing that comes upon you when you come here is the Holy Spirit doing something within you because the words that you are hearing are not just carnal words it's not just a lecture the words you are hearing is spirit and life so while the word is coming something an anointing one of the true riches of the kingdom comes with the word too If you believe what I'm teaching you, you will so dominate life in a way that will surprise you. When you do not possess the riches of the Spirit, then every other thing becomes Lord over your life. But those who dominate in this kingdom are those who possess the true riches of the kingdom. Hallelujah. have a new topic tonight but last week um, I was to give us six points on what the secret place is I gave us five and we had to stop because of the time let me quickly give us the last one please you can um, especially if you were here just go back to your notes and I'll give you the last point very quickly and then we'll go to tonight's discussion We discussed last week that the secret place is a place of brokenness. We discussed that the secret place is a place where we obtain mercy. That the secret place is a place of revelation. Where the mysteries and the strategies of the spirit are revealed to men. Especially the mysteries that's responsible for your destiny. I'm lifting your family, said the Spirit of God. No, this is, not, this is not for everybody. I'm speaking to someone now. I'm lifting your family. It will be like a dream. It will be like a dream. I'm lifting your family. 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 Lifting your family. The Lord is bringing... Bringing... A long period of struggle for a family to end that's what the Lord is doing a confusion of many years coming to end within a week Completely. within a week The Lord is speaking to someone here and he's saying, I will visit you again. Of course, everyone can receive, but this is 
a particular revelation God is saying I am coming to you again the way I came before I am coming again I am coming again it will be in this month this month of June he will come to you again with a very strange encounter and you will receive something from that encounter that will change your life in the name of Jesus Christ please be seated so we said that number four that the secret place is a place where we find rest and comfort rest and comfort and then number five we said the secret place is a place of revival and restoration revival revival of fire revival of love revival of passion revival of grace revival of mantles revival of new dimensions in the spirit and then i'll give you the last one and then we'll go this is not the topic for today i just want to make sure we complete the note that the secret place is the place of spiritual empowerment we gain power not by strolling on the seat it is in the secret place that we find true spiritual power in a secret place you get the anointing for your personal life and in the secret place you get the anointing to accomplish God's agenda for a season you can be anointed as a believer but not anointed to be relevant for a season listen very carefully it is possible that I'm anointed if you come to me I can pray for you but as far as God's agenda within a territory is concerned it's possible that you are not relevant there is a special anointing that one is not the anointing for a believer that one is not even the anointing for your call and office it is the anointing that makes a man relevant within a season that's why you see many anointed people become voiceless after certain seasons they are still anointed they still love god but the anointing to play a key role in god's program is not there so although they are anointed you still get blessed but it's very clear that the lampstand is not on them within that season The Lord put a very serious topic in my heart tonight that I want to share. Tonight's topic is going to challenge you, is going to inspire you, and is going to provoke you. Pray in the Spirit for one minute. Just do what I'm asking you to do. Pray in the Spirit. Just pray in the Spirit for one minute. Just be sensitive to the instructions. You're allowing your spirit to contact something while you pray. Don't stop, keep praying. Yon, God most high, Jesus Christ is the Elyon of Israel. Elyon, God most high, Jesus Christ is the 
sit down, get something to write if you can unless understand what the Lord wants to help us I'm not sure we'll be able to complete it tonight contending for kingdom relevance part one mm. contending for kingdom relevance part one Contending for kingdom relevance, part one. This is a very powerful teaching that seeks to show you how you can become a voice. You can represent the voice of God to a generation and you can rise to a position of kingdom influence. Remember, we're still in a season where God has declared that he is lifting men. Acts chapter 13 and verse 36. Please give it to us. Salabakushi atakatuski abaladi. No sados keleshi andas kabaru hasikatia. Salabarus kelebradi ke adabaladaba. Salabaru ke adabaladaba. Just sit where you are. Something is lifting from your life. Lifting from your life. Lifting from your life, I change that situation now. I change that situation now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I change that situation now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I change that situation now. For David, please give us Amplified. It says, for David, after he had served God's will and purpose and counsel, but he served it in his own generation. He said, fell asleep and was buried. But he said, David served God in his generation it's not enough to serve God it's enough to serve God within the context of a generation are we together now there are mandates that are left for generations every generation has a spiritual curriculum about God and his purposes that God intends for them to accomplish and hear me your relevance within a generation is predicated upon your understanding your generation and knowing the corporate mandate that God has put upon that generation you can live within a generation and serve God but serve God in a way and manner that does not influence a generation it's not enough to serve God you must serve God in a way and a manner that brings the purposes of God 
to a generation and this is what I want to teach you tonight he said David served God's will and purpose and counsel in his own generation not another generation everyone that the Bible records that was used by God was used within the context of a generation listen very carefully if you miss relevance within your generation then you have missed relevance forever are we together I think I was teaching in Lagos during the Younger Gilded program and I gave them an illustration no matter how anointed I am anybody above 55 years is not within the scope of my generation no matter how I love them they will be blessed from my life but they will quickly go to Papa Oyedeko and Papa Deboe because those are the voices of that generation are you getting what I'm teaching you now? It's not enough to seek relevance. You must seek relevance within the context of a generation. Your voice does not speak to every generation. There is a generation where your relevance is allocated to. God sends men not just to places. He sends men to a generation. And if you cannot identify your generation of impact and influence... Then you will live a very useless life. And David, after he served the will of God, there are some things that are allowed in other generations that are not allowed in others. Are we together? Every time God was about to move within the scope of a generation, he would find a man or he would find men and then begin to introduce them to the dynamics of relevance and greatness contending for kingdom relevance there are things that we need to know if we are to rise to a point of kingdom influence and relevance and have taught us again and again in this place that kingdom relevance is very important to have kingdom influence and it is also very important to be able to speak the purposes of God when you are unable to represent the purposes of God within a generation then you may not be able to To influence that generation judges chapter 6 please very quickly we're going to read from verse 11 judges chapter 6 this was an encounter that the Lord had with a young man called Gideon verse 11 and there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak which is in Ophrah and pertained to Joash and all of that and his son Gideon Gideon threshed wheat by the wine press to hide it from the Midianites remember they were being threatened by the Midianites and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said the Lord is with thee O mighty man of failure and Gideon answered and said unto him O my Lord if the Lord be with us, why then is this befallen us? And where be all his miracles which our father told of saying, Does the Lord not do this and that and that for him? And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent thee? It didn't look to Gideon like he was sent. But God said, have I not sent thee with a message and a mandate to a people? Next verse 15. And he said unto him, listen, listen carefully. 
he said oh my lord wherewith shall i save where not the whole world israel you have sent me with a message but that message is to a people and a context he said behold this is my limitation my family is poor in manasseh and i am aside from the fact that the family is poor i am the least in my father's house look at the excuse he's giving god is telling him i am lifting you and then he says i cannot do the assignment because of two things one poverty there is a relationship between poverty and lack of influence and lack of relevance number two lack of greatness i am small my family is small and yet even in that family i am the least in my father's house 16 hallelujah hallelujah and the lord said unto him surely i will be with thee and because of my presence with thee thou shalt smite the midianites as one man follow me very carefully tonight <laughs> jesus psalm 24 and verse 6 he said this is the generation not this is the person listen carefully this is the generation that has a mandate as a generation to seek God but to seek God in the similitude of Jacob listen very carefully he's saying the word oh Jacob there is oh God of Jacob he said there is a generation mandated by God to seek God in the similitude of Jacob are we together now when God tells you to search for him he looks for human references that are reflections of that expectation are we together when God wants to teach believers to love he will lift up John and tell them to study his life when God wants to teach people how to walk in the blessing he lifts up Abraham and tells them to study his life in James chapter 5 when God is teaching people how to pray strategic prayer he lifts up a prophet called Elijah and says study him when God wants to teach people on faith he lifts up Peter when God wants to teach men on revelation he lifts up Paul the apostle are we together now so God is very figurative in his expression for you to understand this scripture you have to go back to Genesis 28 and Genesis 32 and study how Jacob sought God because he said that mandate that was on one man Jacob is a mandate that one day will come upon a generation that a generation will be mandated to seek the face of God in the similitude of Jacob are we together God appears to Jacob in chapter 28 and until that time listen carefully there was no God of Jacob when God revealed himself he said I am the God of Abraham there was a way I taught Abraham to seek me there were possibilities about me that no one had known but my encounter with Abraham introduced the world of men to these possibilities the God of Abraham then Isaac the son used the God of Abraham to create the God of Isaac the God of Abraham was a springboard the mysteries of God that his father knew and out of his own dealings with God God created a name called the God of Isaac by the time we get to Psalms here Jacob had done his own too and God names himself by a man's experience with him 
Jacob's encounter is so powerful that God's covenant people were not named after Abraham. They were not named after Isaac. They are not called the Abrahamites. They are not called the Isaacites. They are called the Israelites, not even the Jacobites. So powerful was this encounter that God said, the generation that wants to know me must seek me in the similitude of Jacob. You want to influence a generation? Hmm. God is lifting her, Dr. Halima. I'm seeing her climb a ladder. The Spirit of God is lifting her to a higher level of influence. That's what, that's what I'm seeing in the Spirit. You want to be relevant to a generation. If you love God and you desire that through your life his purposes be established then you must contend for kingdom influence i've taught you again and again in this place that kingdom advance is a product of two things one is global evangelization number two influence the purposes of the kingdom must be established in the hearts of men through evangelism and then through influence must be established across every strata of human activities are we together and so you must know how to birth the purposes of god and i want you to follow me as i share with you there are certain things in the spirit that when you touch you will never be irrelevant please listen to me but most of what it takes to be relevant believers are not seeking it we are seeking nonsense all around yet we are looking for kingdom relevance the things that make for relevance in this kingdom are spiritual in context first in that order we are searching for mundane and carnal things that do not have the fortitude to give men a voice in a generation that's why I shared with you the secret place before coming to this topic. And David served his generation. I hope you know, listen very carefully. I hope you know that when the Holy Ghost came upon the apostles in Acts chapter 2, from then onwards, the strategic apostles that were listed in the Bible were not the only ones who received there were many other people but a few people grew to a point where their voices echoed through history to the point that they were captured in this bible when you study history not just bible history you study history and archaeology you will find out that many other spiritual things happen concurrently as at the time certain historic writings were being written spiritual things but they were not relevant to the context and the program of god within a generation it's amazing how people think because they are born again or they have a church or they have revelation they will continue to be relevant in god's program for all seasons no sir I have seen extremely anointed men and women of God and I have seen the boundaries of their relevance with respect to a generation I have seen people who are not too anointed but I've seen them at the epicenter of a generation's relevance there are men and women who would look at people like Joel Austin and look at people like Joyce Mayer and um, if you're one who is into the things of the spirit fasting prayer with all honor and respect you may not so much appreciate their ministry because of the context of their communication it sounds very basic yet in a way that looks as though it's a charm they have commanded the attention of a generation effortlessly unbendingly they have entered their sabbath in relevance 
and yet again and again we find anointed men miracle workers still crouching scrounging at the doorways the corridors of relevance understand what i'm teaching you tonight and you will enter your sabbath there will be no need for competition there will be no need for unhealthy comparison because you will know that the keys of a generation has been given to you <laughs> you have captured my heart consume my heart with your love. generation he peeped into another generation that was not his own and he wanted to still negotiate and god said no 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 you have tried Abba. he wanted to start building a temple to start the mandate of another generation and god said you have tried you have tried you have tried david you have served god you have shed blood in the process just relax let your son take over and he said i must still contribute let me gather the materials and god said this man david you you are a man after my own heart and because of that you may not serve in that generation but i will show you look at the messiah and david saw a vision the lord said to my lord sit down that was a coronation of jesus he said david so long he he mastered his generation there was no other voice speaking samuel was a man who held the keys to the voice of God in his generation. You could brag and talk nonsense, but if you did not find Samuel, you would keep crying. It wasn't pride. Oh, God is everywhere. Yes, but there are gatekeepers. Samuel. Samuel. To the point that when a man was about to step into the anointing, God had to use a coincidence to lead him to Samuel. The Bible says of Samuel that none of his words, none of his words fell to the ground. But remember before Samuel started, there was a man called Eli that served the priesthood of his time. There was a period of more than 500 years of darkness from Malachi till the appearance of John after prophet Malachi it was somewhat a very dark season for the church no prophecy no nothing everything and all of a sudden a young boy born to a man who began to manifest a level of priesthood called John the prophet was in the wilderness and all of a sudden, for the first time, they would encounter a prophetic voice. They had lost touch with prophecy. And then, John was so wise, he knew when his relevance was coming to an end. And when Jesus show up, showed up, this is what he said, that I may decrease. I have exhausted myself, Jesus. Listen. John remained relevant because he announced Jesus and he kept upholding Jesus. The moment he brought Jesus down, he died too with him. Although his mandate was over, he said, who is the next? Let me uphold him. Let me give you this secret. I want to teach you something powerful. If you are in ministry, never fight your sons. 
a father that fights his sons loses his honor a son that fights his father loses his life there are punishments allocated for the various offenses every time you see god lifting a man join to lift it if the last move of god always fights the next move of god chances are that when we are in the program of god and a shift begins to happen and god begins to raise other voices the the threat of feeling irrelevant begins to make people to not want to partner with what god is doing and they now begin to fight it and you cannot fight what is of god you will go down and so they go down together with it do you know why david's name still remained relevant lord you will not allow me build the temple you said i've shed innocent blood i would have been offended and david's name would have gone down but he said no solomon i will gather the materials for you build the house i will gather the material everybody who partnered with everything god was doing also remained relevant that was the wisdom of the woman with the alabaster box i'm a prostitute i mean i don't have a name but jesus can i partner with your relevance and jesus said anywhere they talk about me this woman too her story will be remembered there are people all across this nation and all across the earth who by either because their assignment has come to an end or their lack of spiritual alignment has edged them out of God's program. Once upon a time, they were at the epicenter of God's program. But either because of pride or disalignment or just the assignment coming to end. You know why Billy Graham remained relevant? He knew when he had served his generation and he created a legacy institute. And all he was doing till he died was lifting all those who it was their generation. And although he's dead, he has been immortalized through his ability to lift men. Same thing with my dear mentor, eternally Dr. Miles Monroe. He died, but his books brought him back to life. He said, body, you can be laid to rest. Mind, stand up and keep speaking. Miles Monroe is still alive. His body is in the grave. But his mind is still in us. We have kept him alive. Because he saw a generation. One of the last books that he wrote before he died was passing it on. The mystery. Not everybody will be relevant for our generation. Once upon a time, Papa E.A. Adeboye grew with a generation and today he's old with that generation. No matter how prophetic you are, your mother would prefer to listen to Papa E.A. Adeboye than you. I said it in Lagos that even if I cut a human head and throw it down and carry it up and fix it back to show how powerful I am, an old woman will look at me and say, wow, young man, I'm impressed. Let me go to redemption camp quickly. I'll see you later. Because even if they come for this program, you were not sent to that generation. The voice that grew with that generation is the voice that represents the purposes of God to them. Listen, demons know this. Occultists know this. Believers do not know how to grow with a generation such that you become a dimension of God. The four faces at the throne represented different dimensions of God. What I am teaching you tonight will keep you relevant because by the time you are established in this kingdom, your generation will know you to be the face of something about God to them. Every time you talk of prosperity, we go to Sam Adeyemi for his generation. When you talk about faith and signs and wonders, am I not a man of faith? But you see, our parents will not come to me as that reference. 
I didn't grow with that generation to represent that dimension of God. I'm teaching you how you cannot be erased in the purposes of God. You want to stay relevant? It's more than making money. You must represent a dimension of God to a generation and grow with them knowing you to represent that. By the time they are established, they will educate themselves to look up to you by grace as a revelation of that dimension. Who is the Samadhi of our generation? Who is the Bishop Oyedeko of our generation? Who is the Papa Iya Deboy of our generation? Who is the WF Kumuyo of our generation? Who is the Apostle Babalola of our generation? It's not just giving yourself titles, I'm Apostle, nonsense, I'm, I'm Prophet, rubbish. That's not the issue. It's about staying. It is your generation that will call you, not you. The Bible said they shall call you. The reward for being branded to represent a dimension of God is the name they call you. Are we together? Some of us, your ministries right now have a lot of small children and teenagers and you are embarrassed because you are hoping that rich millionaires of 60 years will start coming to your church. You better thank God for sending a generation for you to grow with them. Are we together? I remember years ago when he and I started, there were a lot of young people, students all around, and people would just look at it like a children's Sunday school class. And I said, oh dear. Those people that are children are now workers scattered all around. You see that? If Papa Ia Deboe says all believers in Nigeria fast for three days, whether you're a member of Redeem or not, you are going to fast. If your pastor said don't fast, you just respect him and pass and say nonsense. <laughs> you just started a church two years ago and you are telling me to disobey a man. He has represented the voice of God, not just to Nigeria, but to the world, contending for kingdom relevance. I will never lead a group of people who are anointed and not relevant. I have studied the systems of the kingdom and I have studied the limitation of the ignorance of anointed men of God. Men and women of God, especially in this nation, are very ignorant when it comes to the strategies for kingdom advance. The scope of our relevance is building individual capacities to love God. But the strategy for kingdom advance is seldom understood. And our generation is at the mercy of a bridge, a repairer of the bridge. Otherwise, we will have very heavy spiritual capacities and lose a voice territorially. Are we together? Praise the Lord. Five keys. Let me not waste your time. Straight to the point. Five keys. You want to serve your generation? Please, I want you to listen very carefully. To become influential enough to establish the purposes of, the purposes of God within a generation. Number one, you must know God. You must know God. You want to serve the purposes of God. You must know God. Not you may know God. Not you can know God. You must have an encounter with God. Daniel chapter 11 verse 32. The Bible ties exploits even within a generation to the knowledge of God. Are we together? It says such as do wickedly against the covenant he shall corrupt by flatteries he said but the people that do know they are god they are god let me tell you what that means to know god is not just to know the general god you must know the god revealed to your generation if you are in jacob's generation and you know the god of abraham alone you will not be relevant in jacob's generation Every generation has a dimension of God revealed to it. Whoever finds that dimension is the person who becomes relevant within that context. Are we blessed? But the people 
that do know their God, they shall be strong and shall do exploits. Listen to me. In this kingdom, it is your fraternity with the spirit realm that culminates to your dominion and your victory. Ask any great man. If they are honest enough, they will tell you there is a certain level in this kingdom and in the world today, you cannot rise beyond without a fraternity with the realm of the spirit. Whether in business, in ministry, listen carefully, career, whatever it is. If you ever see anyone commanding any dimension of superior results, whether through occultism, whether in the it's secular or whatever, I can tell you beyond the secular knowledge and all of those things, a time came in their lives when they became assisted by the realm of the spirit. For 30 years, Jesus as the word, the living logos was powerless. But when the Holy Ghost came upon him, that partnership turned him into Christos, the Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah. You must know God. You must know God. Jeremiah chapter 9 and verse 23 to 24. Please give it to us quickly. Jeremiah chapter 9. Thus saith the Lord, not an angel, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Our generation has many wise men who are poor many wise men who are broke many wise men who are not relevant at all the bible says first things first he didn't say wisdom is not important let not the wise man glory in his wisdom let not the mighty man glory in his might let not the rich man glory in his riches 24 but let him that glorieth glory in this that he understandeth and knoweth me. That's the pride of the believer. Your, the foundation of your confidence in life should never be because of the car that is parked outside, because of the food that is on your table, because of your degree that is in your drawer. Are we together? No. All those things only make sense when you are centrally connected to God. Those who will be relevant in these end times. Those who will defy the operation of demons. Those who will defy the causes and the yokes of culture. Those who will defy all the manipulations of darkness. They are not just well-meaning people. But those who know their God. Understand it and know it me. Are we blessed? You go and prescribe this to someone who wants to be great and see how he will frown at you he won't exactly hate it he will just smile and be angry because he believes that when you want to be great just teach him business principles do this do that quickly you want to be great oh let me teach you on book publishing book publishing is the art of a that gives b this to c all those things are rubbish if you don't know god one yoke from your village can rewind your success is all you are you are you are laboring for nothing the bible says it is vain to wake up in the morning hear me nigerians wake up in the morning and sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow that's why many hard-working people are angry they look at life and say it's not fair and you are right I was a graduate since 1961 and I've not built a house now. And look at all these small, 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 small boys. Sorry for you. The foundation of relevance for every generation is not just your connection to God, but your knowledge of God. When last did you ever see this being prescribed as a formula for greatness? And please, those of you here who are into personal development and the rest is wonderful. When you are teaching the secular, you go ahead. But when you are mentoring people, let the foundation of growth be the realm of the spirit. Are we together? 
You know, you talk like this and a lot of people believe that you don't know what you are saying. You don't know anything about secular success. You are wrong. You are wrong. You must know God. Jacob had an encounter with God. A nation has never been named after you. A nation has never been named after your father and my father. Listen carefully. A nation has never been named even after your president. There is, I'm not sure of any nation in the world that has been named after a man. So when a man is so relevant that God's nation is named after him, study how he rose up like that. The foundation was not intelligence. The foundation was an encounter. Genesis chapter 28. When you read from 11 to 17, he lighted upon a place and laid down on a stone to sleep. And the Bible says, when you begin to read down to 17, that a ladder was connecting the earth to heaven. Listen very carefully. And then at the top of it, give us verse, let's see verse 13 or 14. And listen, behold, the Lord stood above it. Let's hear what God is saying. God said, I am the God of who? God himself is calling himself the God of Abraham. So it's not something men are calling. God himself called himself. Not I am the king of kings. I am the God of Abraham. I am the God of Isaac. Stop. No other person had been interested in knowing me enough to add to the list. That means it was never supposed to just stop as the God of Israel. I am the God of Abraham. The God of Isaac. I am the God of Jacob. Uh-huh. I am the root of David. David added himself. I am this and that. Then Joshua Selman too comes to add himself. So that our children, when you say, I'm not saying you say the God of Joshua Selman. I'm just teaching you how it is. When you say the God of Joshua Selman, it's not the same as the God of Abraham. I don't know what Abraham saw. I don't know what, what his business was with God. But there is a dimension. You hear the people say the God of our fathers had appeared to me. At that time, Jacob had not yet been in the list. He says, the land where out thou will this and that and that and that. And then Jacob woke up in the morning and said, the Lord was in this place and I knew not. How terrible. He said, this is the house of God, the gates of heaven. The next encounter will be in chapter 32 and verse 22. Please give it to us. We are reading down to 30, chapter 32 from verse 22. 22, 32, 22. Chapter 32 and verse 22. Let me read it from here. Chapter 32 and verse 22. And he rose up that night, Jacob now, and took his two wives and his two women servants and his eleven sons and passed over forth Jabbok 23 we're reading to 30 and he took them and sent them over the brook and sent over that he had 24 and Jacob was left alone Jacob got to a point where everything that represented his relevance he had to give it away wives go possessions go everything go and when he was alone the reason why many of us may never encounter god is because there are many things together with us your money is still there your house is still there every other thing is there but when you are left alone he says and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of day 25 and when he saw that he prevailed not against him he touched the strongest part that means you have been strong by yourself without me. I see that you so love your decree to a point that every time I say I'm lifting you, you smile and say it's because I'm an engineer. Of course I should be lifted. It's because I'm a doctor. It's because I'm an architect. Lord, I know that contract and God touched that area and said it may not always be by what you call strength. It is by my strength. And the hall of Jacob's tie was out of joint. And he wrestled with him. 26. 
And he said, let me go, God now, for the day breaketh. And he said, Jacob, may that be someone's testimony. Oh, that you say, Lord, in this generation, I don't just want to be a story. I will hold on to you. And people say, look, everybody is getting a job. Oh, everybody is moving. And you say, just leave me. May God bless you. But Lord, I cannot leave this place. You see, many graduates make a foolish mistake. The moment they write their last exam, they pour mineral on their head and joke around and play around tap water and immediately they are done. They carry their bag and run and join the queue of confusion. When you should stay back and have a two weeks retreat and lie down near one tree and say, Lord, I'm not leaving this place until I... F what will I tell my generation? That I went to school for five years? Is that enough to give you a voice? I entered somewhere in Abuja and the receptionist had three MSCs. Receptionist, three MSCs. I said, if you come to this place and it's grammar you want to talk, you will be a foolish person. Three, two of them were abroad and then one in the country. Receptionist. Don't think it's a small place. A salary can, let me just keep quiet. No, don't, don't think receptionist like you are thinking one small kiosk. No, that's a place where only kings enter. And I said, my God, you need more in this life. Brothers and sisters, I'm not teaching you to be lazy. But I'm telling you that if you want to command a voice, you can carry your first class degree and get a job and meet somebody who was the son of a herbalist who also got the job with you. And they say, we are considering someone for promotion and he's laughing at you already. He's pitying you because he knows one week to the promotion interview your leg refuses to move from your bed and you come to the office and he says well just to let you know that you had me you had that they say my father is a herbalist <laughs> the wicked world that we live in i know someone who was promoted true story sat down on his chair for the first time and died on the chair there went to consult all kinds of people some habali says his wife that killed him some other habali says the guy that mops the the office that killed him it doesn't matter he's dead he's dead who killed you it's not a, you are dead can you know god to a point that someone is concocting a charm the first portion he drops fire response fire and says no no there are some touch knots Ah, ah, he suffered no man to do them wrong. He reproved kings for their sake, saying, Touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. Listen, something happened, I think it was last week. One of our dear ones, some of these touts, these boys around that catch people, collect phones, and the rest. And I got to hear that one of our dear ones, as he went home, he was whether he was on his way home or he went home. I think he went home and they went to get something or so afterwards that some of these cows these guys just attacked him they attacked him collected phone this they caught him like this with a knife like a ram they showed it to me when i was in lagos over the over the, the, the week i just came back today and then when i saw it i was just laughing i allowed them the protocol and the rest to shut the door i got down on my knees I said, Lord, except I am not anointed. The person who did this thing. Listen, when I said that by evening, they had caught them. They are right now, as you call Alex outside, the police now, right now. Do you know how they caught them? They, after that prayer, the guy now went to go and waylay somebody. He didn't know he was a police officer. Then they caught him and packed all the phones. And the phone they picked was the guy's own. They called and his friend was with him in the hospital. As it is today, they are carrying him to the hospital to identify him. And only God knows what they will do for him. Do you know God that much? That the bowing of your knees can manipulate anything in the earth realm. See, let me tell you. If you don't understand this, most times you would think people are boasting. When someone says, I will pray for you. You've heard that thing? 
I will pray for you. He doesn't pray for us so because you know his prayer is powerless. But there are people, if they say they will pray for you, rejoice. They are not using your faith. He said, for this cause, I, Paul, bow my knees to the Father. I'm praying for your sake. Ah! Jesus prayed for us. So John 17, he prayed for us. When I was coming, the military people came to greet me. I said, please, you people should use those boys to teach people in this area that there are still apostolic and prophetic voices. We are not just acting nonsense here. And then all kinds of young boys just go and continue oppressing people. What devil? What nonsense? I'm saying it again. Let me announce across this territory that any gentleman, any lady, whether you are here or not, that gets up to manipulate people, boggle their house, I command the earth to fight them from tonight. That some of them will go to bed and lie down and not wake up. The territory should know that God has voices. It's not by coming on TV and making noise. Elijah said there shall be no rain. We need to sanitize this spiritual environment. Halagbara by the mighty God. Hey, let's go. But the people, you don't need to know everything about God. You just need to know the dimension of Him revealed to you. I don't boast of knowing everything about God. There are some things about God I totally don't know. But let me tell you, there are dimensions of God that He has shown me by His grace. Your pursuit, if you want to be relevant to a generation, you must know these dimensions of God. Going to church is not enough. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Praying and fasting is not knowing God. There are only tools to help you know God. One of the major reasons why people don't know God is they don't give Him time. Be careful with this I'm busy, I'm busy. You need to give God time to know Him. Our generation, we pray, we fast, we sing, we go to church, but we are unwilling to give God time to know Him. If you see people doing three days fast, there's fire on the mountain. Real fire on the mountain. Lord, where are you? Then the fire goes down and you leave Him. That you sit down and say, Lord, I want to know you. What message do I have to my generation? You must know God. I'm challenging every one of us here. Please tell yourself the truth and stop allowing people to just clap for you and say, Wow, prayer warrior. Wow, fasting giant. Wow, word, word, revelation, signs, signs and wonders producer. And you move around fooling yourself that you know God. And life tests you. And there is nothing about God that you know. He says that I may know him. Pray in one minute and say, Lord, reveal yourself. Reveal yourself to me, O God. That I may know you. Lord, I'm tired of ordinary Christianity without power. Show me your glory.
show me your grace hallelujah there are things you must know about God there are things I know about men um, I used to have what I, I, I cannot I can't remember who exactly but there used to be one gentleman years ago I used to tease him he looked very powerless as a man but you don't see any power you can almost shake him and I said if they ever tell me you fought somebody I won't believe because I know you I know you enough to know you are not even strong to lift a sizable chair so if somebody tells you that that guy finished beating one police officer you just laugh and say except the anointing came on him there was something David knew about God that made him stand before Goliath we stand and face the challenges in life based on the knowledge of God that we have the armies of Israel had the same weapons that David would later hold but they could not confront Goliath there was something Goliath too knew he was not just big Goliath was not the only giant in the land even among the Israelites they were also giants but they stood and Goliath was roaring wicked man and David said don't mind him carry the sling he said I'm going to remove this your head you will fall down I will use your sword cut it and feed the birds Goliath said am I a dog he said you will soon know when he wound that thing it was not just his hand winding it there was an anointing and he hit Goliath once Goliath himself was shocked that he fell there was something Joshua oh bless his name Joshua knew about God and he said go round don't mind all this big mountain for nothing notice that all the challenges are usually very big Jericho Goliath Red Sea so don't be surprised when yours is big why will you expect it to be small how then will God be glorified 25 years barrenness are we together there is something you need to know about God that you will stand before a generation and they'll say ma it's two years and you are not pregnant yet he said just wait and all of a sudden by the third year triplets will come nine years in three years and they'll come and say ah, you just gave birth i didn't give birth i manifested miracles don't call that is not delivery you go and try it if you get triplets show me the science of producing triplets i know something about god Where someone threatens you and says in this office they bow to me to rise if you are not willing to bow to me with honorarium of one million and then respect you are not rising up. and everybody above you will say just this guy is connected to the presidency and he say all right sir may god bless you and you go back in the night and do something that will make that man call you in a hurry and sign your document and you say just just for starters to let you know that there are men and there are men are we together someone plants a charm to kill you and he's sleeping in his room the charm meets him there physically again charm said you sent me and somebody changed my direction and brought me to the same place I remember years ago one of our lady went to meet a herbalist in this place this this one a herbalist for something like that she kept giving him money was concocting a charm for something and then the last one now he now asked for an honorarium of thirty thousand. i said her or he, he now started calling her number you better come and fulfill your this you have made me start the charm true story you will run mad and she now ran to me came and confessed his pressure a and b and c happened i said what that happened is so my concern is not the charm is his life tell him that he should check in the realm of the spirit you don't speak like that if you have not met god because many people have made bold face 
when I used to counsel people in area E some of the protocol people would testify people will come with a letter you would think it's mineral they are holding for me until they open it you will now see that it's a charm they collected it from one baba and brought it and I said bring it I look at it as a nonsense you ask the charm to come there is something you need to know this world is wicked if all you know is what your eyes have seen you better start crying because there are arrows that fly by day you you don't need to offend anybody who are your friend nonsense it's a wicked world you mean this lady is getting married ah no we have to do something Haba. you mean this man is the one this young man is the one building this house no uh, uh, uh. you mean is this this young guy phd no it took me 11 years to get phd why will he get phd in four years no you mean this young lady five children no way our world is wicked it's not a news are we together years ago um one gentleman that i know got married in kaduna and then we went then to go and just celebrate with them and while they were bringing the gift true stories i like praying for gifts we noticed i was sitting down and i noticed after everybody had dropped everything the wedding was almost over and then a woman just came with something that looks like a bucket just dropped it i tapped one of my colleague and said the lord just showed me something we opened that bucket true story and we, you know this bucket you put sugar or semovita white this white bucket we saw it with a stone in the middle I lifted it i said you see this this is fruitfulness blocked that woman will get married now until her husband drives her and say we can't marry two men go let me look for a woman and i told them i said you people should just be praying on the other gift just leave me with this one can you confront the gates of darkness and go to bed if they bring a charm for you now and say sorry help me and scatter it please will you say come for koinonia on friday or come and drop it in miracle service say, no 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 apostle is busy bring it and you hold it and without saying any prayer from where you are holding it someone is jumping from their house and saying i won't do it again ah. may god make us a powerful generation all this ministry of just falling down and he said two people will fall the realm of the spirit is higher than that oh you need results shift in people's destiny just falling down and rolling and standing up they that know their god you get up and have a dream and in that dream you see that there's obituary every month in your house you don't sit quietly and then everybody starts dying and you say ah people are dying that's not the time to start disturbing me i say apostle you are sleeping ah uh, prayer department benga promise pastor alpha kenny no you get up and you say he's not only the god of abraham he's not only the god of isaac you are my god And you announce to Satan and say if you if you near the vicinity of my family again it's a decree it's not pride no when to be a lion and no when to be a lamb no warrior is a lamb in the face of battle whoever told you that this world is a playground you must know God greatness is warfare greatness is not just an equation a plus b equals to greatness no sir i say it jokingly only god knows the shrines on earth that my name has gone to maybe your zaria city any other place oh god let him sleep and not wake up while they finish the charm i just stretch shabasos kabarando kasilia kata God gives men the power to lay it down and the power to take it up. You must know God. Take the time to know God. 
you don't know God by a one hour weekly service no sir you don't know God by a five minutes Bible study you don't know God by an occasional fast when there's trouble you don't know God by a fire brigade closed door retreat you give God time and say Lord I want to know you I want to know you I want to see your face I want to know you, Lord. I want to touch you. I want to hear your voice. I want to love you, Lord. There are many of us tonight, God is calling and say stop this religion and be serious with me stop this religion i'm a deacon in my church i'm an elder i'm the chairman of marriage counseling i am the pastor in charge of choir and no settle down and say lord i want to know you reveal yourself i'm tired of lying and pretending i don't have boldness because i don't know you knowing god is not becoming a pastor Listen to my message, knowing God experientially. God uses experiences to reveal men. You can't just know God. Every experience in your life now is an opportunity to know a dimension of God. Don't waste it by crying around like a fool. Say, Lord, there must be something. All of a sudden, all my money has disappeared to the point that I don't have five naira. Instead of just saying it's an attack, Lord, there is something you want to show me. El Shaddai is calling. El Shaddai, he wants to show me that he's the all-sufficient God. Don't waste your pain. Don't waste your tears. Use them as an opportunity to know something about God. Apostle have been buried in five years. All right, use the opportunity to know something about God. So that the next time you are saying he can make a way in the wilderness, it's not a song, it's your life. Are we together? Apostle, I had a dream. In that dream, I saw five points. When my result came out, I saw 2.5. Cry. There is something about God you need to know. It is because many people don't know God. That's why they don't receive some prayers. Notice that people receive prayers according to their level of insight about God. When you pray and say in the name of Jesus, favor, amen. But when you say in the name of Jesus, someone who has no business coming to you, I call, ah, they just say amen. Careless amen that doesn't have faith in it. Because that dimension of God has not been captured. Let me give us one more and we pray for tonight. We'll continue next week. Contending for generational relevance contending for kingdom relevance those who will reign in this kingdom must be men and women who know God whether you are a businessman whether you are whatever you must know God you know sometimes sometimes I counsel people when I travel and um, while I'm counseling them the Lord begins to show me something like charms that they have in their houses or something that they tie on their waist for protection and preservation and yet they come and sit down as a man of God do you know if you are not powerful that thing will fight you in the name of praying for somebody oh God let this guy win chairmanship and that night you sleep and an old man walks you in a dream one word two words be careful and just leaves you and you wake up with headache you don't know where it's coming from and where it is going to you go to the hospital nothing for one week then he comes again you say be careful then the headache stops the next time somebody comes for you to pray for him you say no please go to koinonia when dagon was put face to face with the ark of god the ark didn't remove hands to touch him they came back in the morning and met Dagon. If he just fell backwards, 
that's not honor it fell face forward may your life from tonight be a threat to the kingdom of darkness listen my prayer for you koinonia hear me is that you don't mock yourself by praying three hours and yet you are afraid of every manifestation of the valley of the shadow of death these boys that scam years ago they sent a text to my phone one i think it's a text they sent to people we are watching you now from where we are and something 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 you have, you have it's like they are threatening you maybe they are watching you through a window somewhere and i, I said look at this they can now lie to you and say go and drop hundred thousand near the green tree near your house and you would think they are really watching you whereas it's a general text they send to everybody fear can create images are we together you have a dream and in the dream dead people are coming to visit you you don't get up and say i saw my father he died 1983 thank god he's your father but what does the living have to do with the dead do you know when you see dead people in your dream I don't mean departed saints now glorified dead people in your dream that's the spirit of the grave that's not the spirit of death that's the, the grave itself has a spirit it's a magnet is calling you like you are invoking that's what is happening you don't get up and say chai nigeria said no what is nigeria shabakatos kalabata oh death where is thy sting Oh grave, where is thy victory? You pray in tongues for five minutes. Distribute fire everywhere. And ask that devil to use the face of your father again. It's not your father. It is appointed once for men to die. The man you see that you are calling your father is not your father. It's a devil carrying the face of your father. What, what father? Your father is there enjoying in heaven and the devil is using the face of one person come come to us come we are calling you let's go home come and eat yam see palm oil what nonsense is that that's what happens to a lot of people they just get up and an infirmity has entered their spirit they go to the hospital and check again and again and again until they die the living has nothing to do with it. if i see anybody i know who has died if it is of god departed saints in light i know if it is a demon spirit i know there is a gulf what fellowship has light got to do with please i'm teaching you this thing if we dwell just in knowing god those who will stand and represent the purposes of god you need to look at the spirit of death eyeball to eyeball we're coming from 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 lagos and and i think it was because of the weather and the pilots too my god the plane was as if it was it was just plain around i was sleeping ask them i was sleeping ah if it will crash i will enter if i enter it will not crash ah apostle the other i don't know who that other person is and what he believes he said let the redeemed of the lord say so you know in this world don't trouble anybody and nobody will trouble. what nonsense are you saying like that the bible said declare ye that ye might test be justified jesus prophesied that i would die but i will come back if jesus didn't say it he will not resurrect let him that glory it glory in this please brothers and sisters there are several people here we thank god for the crowds but koinonia god is not just looking for crowds god is looking for quality people that know god not just the uh, man of god pray for me man of god pray for me on everything man of god sing for me man of god worship for me when will you now build capacity to be a blessing it's all right you can start small our little children in this ministry are more spiritual than most of you these little kids you see the fire you stand near them and see the presence that oozes out of them because of the simplicity of their heart 
they are feeding with the food of adults as children pray they pray fast they fast some of them come to meet me after service my daddy is sick my this is sick i tell them darling bring your hand i place my hand and i say go and lay your hands and truly they will do it but adults they won't do it they'll just say don't don't worry apostle just rub your face with with handkerchief and give it because you are afraid of embarrassment Is God speaking to us today by the grace of God and with all humility there are things that I know about God that has brought rest to my life I show you how to be free from worry know God there are things when you know about God when others are crying you are laughing you are not laughing because you are inhuman you are laughing because of a rest that the knowledge of God has given you it was Bishop Oyedepo who said one time his wife was pregnant and all of a sudden they noticed she was spotting and then, you know, medically speaking, they said she's lost the baby and he just shouted. He said, is it a baby you are delivering or blood? My dinner, please. Come on now. That word maintain that child in that stomach until he gave birth. Blessed is she that believes for unto her, not unto them, unto her, some of you can be listening to me and say, ah, man of God, wow, you can preach well. Life will not ask you whether you are a preacher. The way the devil hates me, if I didn't know what I'm telling you now, he would have killed me since. The devil doesn't want me to backslide, he wants me to die. So a thousand falls by your right, ten thousand by, by your side, ten thousand by your right side. Ah, ah, Pastor Alpha, you are still standing. I thought people in Kogi State don't rise after certain place. No, 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 no. I come from Zion. Ah, I thought your your father worshipped a shrine. So ah, I, I thought that the ladies in your place don't stay three years after they get married. I thought the men that come from from this state are irresponsible men say i don't know who they are but there's something about the knowledge of god is giving me confidence can anything good come out of nazareth yes sir yes sir please prophesy one minute to yourself i live to praise your name i have no fear of what tomorrow brings I live, I live, I live I live to praise your name I have no fear of what tomorrow revelation of God to stamp the face of fear fear of marriage will I marry will I give birth will I have male and female what if my husband dies and leaves me what if my wife dies and leaves me will I be prosperous will the church grow the revelation of God is the antidote to fear God is love and when love is perfected in you it casts out fear Lion of Judah, my trust is in you. Alpha and Omega, my trust is in you. I put them on you.
will continue next week. Hold hands with someone and begin to blast in tongues. Let the realm of the spirit hear your voice. Go ahead and begin to pray. Don't ask anything, just pray. But the people that do know their God, but the people that do know their God, but the people that do know their God, but the people that do know their God. I know you are a merciful God. I know you are a restoration God. I know you are a lifting God. I know you are a gracious God. I know you are a mighty God. The lifter of men. Alpha, Omega. Hallelujah. Listen. If all you know about God is that He's a merciful God, that dimension itself can take you through your lifetime. If all you know about God is that He can restore, you will never cry when things leave you. If all you know about God is that He's the God of the suddenly, five minutes to shame. He shows up. Lord, I know you. God is of a miracle world. God is you are a glorious. God of the suddenness my brother my sister God can wipe the shame of men he said have you ever heard this proverb that in one day a woman gives birth lift your voice and pray Lord I know you I know you as a miracle worker I know you as a destiny changer change my life my story change my life wipe my tears take away the shame from my life hey. Hey. hallelujah we are going to sing that song one more time but thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me, my glory and the lifter of my head. That's the name that is called. But thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me, my glory, my glory and the lifter of my
me my glory my glory and the lifter of my head listen koinonia hear me i want you to leave this service standing tall and facing life with confidence where is your confidence coming from seeing that you graduated with a third class i know god but i know whom i have believed there is something about god that i know where is your confidence seeing that you have no earthly father and mother i know god where is your confidence seeing that you do not have any voice like Gideon the least of your father's house but there is a God who can lift me let me give you two prayer points to round up today's meeting hallelujah listen prayer point number one I'd like you to say father use my life to surprise my generation Lift your voice and pray. Use my life as an object of praise. Lord, use my life. Anoint me in an unusual way. Surprise those who have concluded about my life. Surprise the enemies of your agenda over my life. Hallelujah. Number two. Lord, by your mercy, reveal yourself to me. Please pray. Everyone that asks it, receive it. Lord, I've been crying for marriage, for money, for prosperity, for anointing. But reveal yourself to me. Reveal yourself to me. Reveal yourself to me. Reveal yourself to me. Reveal yourself. Pray. Just a few minutes and we're done.
every fear fear of failure every fear fear of not making it I command that spirit to leave you now and forever listen I speak to someone's life and destiny that you who is seen as a rejected stone they've concluded on you in your family they've even called you names that depict you as being a failure but in the name of Jesus out of that ashes of shame out of that ashes of disappointment out of that ashes of being a non-entity may the hand of the Lord pick you and shoot you like a star for everyone to see I'm praying I don't know who has concluded about your destiny men sit down and discuss you and they even laugh it's true that Jesus died but he only died for three days he didn't die forever rejoice not over me my enemies though I fall while you are discussing my fall yet I rise again I command the grace for resurrection arise from shame arise from pain arise from disappointment hear me some of you are in ministry here and you've not seen the grace of God and you are about to give up did God really call me if he called me why am I not getting the kind of apostles result I bring you a word of hope be patient with God oh because in the midst of that ashes of pain and disappointment and two members is a transgenerational anointing don't be too quick to give up on God God called you to the ministry of kingdom financing but as it is now you don't even have transport back after koinonia and every time you tell people they laugh at you brothers and sisters let me tell you God, my God, look what he's done with my life. God is a lifter. God is a blesser. God is a surpriser. Don't let no devil sit down and compartmentalize you. You are from this tribe. You are from this place. Oh, all you have is a diploma, not a master's. All you have is a degree, not a PhD. Or you don't have any godfather anywhere. What rubbish is that? Have you not learned that with God, with God, with God, without God, some things are not possible. But when he comes into the equation, with God, without God, I cannot rise up. Without God, I cannot prosper. But with God, when he holds your hands, and said son let's go don't be afraid of the giants that stand no Hear me. the Lord is comforting many of us there are giants on everyone's mountain you are not the only one with giants when you watch people laugh it's because they have learned how to keep Goliath down now thanks be to God who causes us always successful people are not people without challenges they are people who have mastered the art of victory they know when to dance when others are crying they know when to speak when others are quiet ah. they know when to cry before god when others are crying before men they know when to sacrifice when others are withholding they know when to stay when others are going This ministry you see thank God for the results that you see and hear but it's not luck there is something about God you know that your results can be predictable there's no ah apostle be careful what if tomorrow there's no result which God are you talking about now return back to your homes tonight with an appetite to know God 
you can use sometime this weekend or at least before we continue next week there are other things to teach you but please go back and sit down and ask yourself am i just a church goer am i just a prayer man am i just a bible study christian or do i know god when challenges stand before me what name of god do i know that i can call when all my enemies surround me and it's obvious they are going to defeat me what do i know about god that turns the hand of things thank you oh my father for giving us your son your spirit until the work on earth is done. Sing it one more time and we're done for tonight. Thank you, oh my Father, for giving us, for giving us your I saw it in my own life I saw it in my own family I've seen this in the life of pastors I've seen this in the life of sincere people number two ignorance the second access point is a lest Satan should take an advantage of us on the strength of our ignorance in this area ignorance ignorance incomplete understanding of the principles of the word or no understanding completely both of them in the spirit is called ignorance whether you know the principle or you know part of it is still ignorance because you are only having um, the bible says you will arise and you will shine isaiah 60 verse 1 not because you are tired of sitting but it says your light is come it's always been there but the day it comes to you it has the power to cause you to arise and shine ignorance that's why we spent three weeks expounding on the mysteries of the kingdom to help us understand the systems of god listen the journey of a believer starts with christ it does not start with principles it starts with an encounter of the person christ when you begin to study principles outside of an, the encounter of christ you will get into scientology and witchcraft and mysticism and spiritism you must encounter the object of your encounter is the person jesus are we together from that standpoint of encounter he reveals himself to you he brings you to a point of intimacy and your reward for intimacy is power and that power is divided into two one power that comes from the understanding of the systems of god and another dimension of power that comes as a reward for intimacy so there are two dimensions of the operations of God's power. Number one is the dimension of his power that is programmed into his laws. By believing those laws, the power is released. Whether you are praying or not. Seed time and harvest is an example of such laws. You engage it and the power of God is released. Are we together? Yeah. But there are certain dimensions of power that will only be released on the strength of intimacy so it is from that standpoint of encounter you begin to explore the systems of god the systems of god defines his way of operation and the moment you comprehend that then you will truly access power ignorance you can be born again and be ignorant number three disobedience the last access point of satan is disobedient willful refusal to comply with God's principles willful refusal that's disobedience you're not doing it out of ignorance the Bible says having the readiness to judge all disobedience when your obedience is complete not when you start 
when it's complete deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 and 2 says and it shall come to pass right that if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord to do and observe all that i command you this day it says that you shall be exalted above all nations and this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you then he begins to list them it shall come to pass if thou will diligently joshua verse 1 uh, chapter 1 verse 8 right the lord was speaking to joshua and then he says this book of the law shall not depart from out of your mouth he says but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do all all not some observe to do right then he says then shall thou make thy ways prosperous and you shall have good success it's very important obedience 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 it's not just hearing what God has said. Obedience is doing what God has said. In John chapter 2, when the servants came to Mary, she said, whatsoever he tells you to do, he said, do it. Hallelujah. Paul the apostle was encouraging the, the early church and he said, now that ye know these things. In fact, it wasn't just Paul. I think it was Jesus himself. He says, now that ye know these things, happy are ye if you do them now that you know happy are you if you do them these brothers and sisters as mysterious as satan looks this is the only way he can find expression his possibilities are finite they are not infinite number one is covenants the strongest access point to satan or to, of satan into people's lives and then number two we have ignorance and number three disobedience and that's why we are gathered here tonight that God will grant us grace to take advantage of the provisions that have come in Christ and end this this buffeting of darkness over our lives and destinies and I pray that it will be someone's testimony tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I pray for you from the depth of my heart that as God begins to touch people he will touch you and end this captivity in your life once and for all is there anything too hard for me to do I am that I am is there anything too hard for me to do I am that I am listen I want you tonight to believe God do not come to God carelessly listen the Bible describes the kind of attitude we must have when we come to God Hebrews 11 verse 6 it says for without faith it is impossible to please him he said for he that cometh unto God must come believing must believe that he is that means he exists and then that he's the rewarder of them that diligently seek him so every time you approach God you don't come to try let me find out whether God can touch this cancer let me find out whether God can end my captivity no you come to him believing say I'm a believer so tonight I want you to approach the mighty God knowing that he's able to do all things believe me you have your requests you have your needs take your eyes away from that infirmity and believe in God it does not look it can be within the twinkling of an eye and God will change your story it doesn't take him time God is not a carpenter he doesn't build by nailing things he builds by speaking are we together now he called darkness light and it became light I really believe God and I came here tonight trusting that God will touch us it's going to be a very quick walk that's why I'm taking out the time to speak to us very quickly let me just take the altar call now look up please let that be the first miracle tonight let's take the altar call so that as we begin to move and just flow we'll just move in one single sweep there's a lot to do tonight 
and we want to save time so that we can finish on time I told you that there are three access points of Satan one covenant two ignorance three disobedience are we together John chapter 3 from verse 16 says for God so loved the world he said that he gave his one and only begotten son who is no longer his one and only but the first begotten of we because he has called many of us into glory are we together then he says that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life the thing I love about the faith life is that you are never forced to do anything your response in the kingdom is always a product of revelation and your willingness if you are willing and obedient then you will eat the good of the land there are people seated here right from praise and worship there are so many listening to me the first overflow and all the overflows around there are so many connecting uh, you know on our social media platforms and you're hearing my voice right now and the holy spirit is telling you the man of god is talking to you the first miracle that can happen to you tonight is the miracle of ending the mismanagement of your life by trying to run it your own way are we together that you hand over your life when you come to jesus you don't just come and accept him in your heart you take your heart and say lord i give you everything not i give you my spiritual life i hand over my entire life to you everything i've been through use it for your glory lord i offer my life to you everything that's true repentance that as you come here you are not just coming because you are feeling guilty you are coming here sincerely saying i'm tired of mismanaging my life there's got to be more than this there's got to be more than living my life the way i want i must come under authority and i know there are so many people inside and outside hearing my voice some of you have never made this decision to make jesus lord of your life you've made a decision to go to church you've made a decision to join a religion called christianity but you have not made a true decision to surrender everything and there are people there's another category i'll call all by uh, at, at once so that we'll save time there are those who at one point you truly made a genuine decision but the cares of this life the challenges in your life just overwhelmed you and right now you know that as it is right now as it is right now you cannot say things are all right between you and god you've backslidden you've you've turned away but the bible says if my people who are called by my name it says shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then it says then we lie here from heaven and will forgive their sin and then will heal their land forgiveness will always follow healing are we together i'm going to make an altar call right now any of the overflows outside inside here very fast i'll count one to ten listen there are people the holy ghost is speaking to and you know that you need to make your ways right with Jesus you're saying Lord things are happening in my family I do not even know the name of what is going in my family the first key is to surrender your all to sacrifice everything before his throne and say Lord I'm not just coming to receive healing I'm coming to start a new life it's called Zoe God's very life not another kind the very life of God hallelujah praise the lord before i make the altar call i want us to all close our eyes and pray in one minute intercede for those who are about to come and say lord no power will stop them from coming no power will stop them from coming we believe in the salvation of souls 
this is not a cinema where we are watching football this is a place where God is changing lives and destinies pray as you are praying for many of you the Lord is going to be speaking to you right now There are so many outside in all the overflows. It's like you've been waiting for a man to call you and say, return home. He's calling you. He's calling you. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to count one to ten. Wherever you are, please I'd like us to begin to celebrate them. Outside, inside, don't wait for others. You are returning to Christ and you are making this decision for the first time. Leave your seat and make your way quickly. One, we'll count one to ten. Don't wait for anybody. God bless you. They are coming. Two, please clear the way for them outside. Don't let no friends stop you. Jesus is calling you. No, no, no. You are doing, you are doing a very noble thing. Don't let any friend, please encourage them outside. If you came with anyone, don't stop them from coming out. God will punish you if you stop anybody from coming out because he's your friend. It's, it's, it's an entirely, um, it's a personal affair. God bless you. Keep coming. Koinonia, a sacrifice of your applause to motivate them and encourage them. Son of God, I believe in you. I believe in you. Keep coming, Jesus, Son of God. I believe in you. I believe in you. Hallelujah. The Lord is still speaking to me that there are people you need to make your ways right with God. In fact, the Lord is showing me at least three ladies. You've not prayed like for the last two months because you are asking what I have done. Will the Lord really, really open up himself to me? And the Lord is saying you should make your way to the front. Clear the way for them, please. Clear the way. I don't care whether you are a pastor, you are a prophet. Make your way to the front. This is serious business. I believe there are still people outside in the overflows the first the second overflow and across the road please make your way to the front we're going to wait for you one more minute we're going to wait for you we're going to wait for you please don't play games with God tonight this is your destiny he wants to bless you he says for I know the thoughts that I think towards you said the Lord Jeremiah 29 11 he says thoughts of peace thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end. I believe in you. I believe in you. Let's all sing this song one more time and then we'll pray for them. Jesus, Son of God, I believe. Hallelujah. I sincerely want to appreciate us, young and old. We are all here to receive Jesus Christ. Look at me, please. If I, if I give you a new phone, you don't accept it as though you are embarrassed. You accept it with gratitude. Salvation is greater than any other thing you will be receiving tonight. Are we together? And so I want you to be very proud of what you are doing. Whether you are being restored or you are giving your heart to Jesus for the first time. Just make sure you are not reciting a poem. Make sure this is from the depth of your heart. Are we together? Lift your right hand high to the heavens and say this after me. I'm just guiding you. But the most important thing is the sincerity of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus. I believe in you. I believe that Jesus is the son of God I believe that he died for me I believe that he rose again for my justification tonight 
I made Jesus my Savior, my Lord. I hand over my life and my destiny to your care. And I ask that you be my Lord, my God, my King forever. From today, the hold of sin, the hold of the flesh over my life comes to an end. This is a new beginning in the name of Jesus. Keep your hands lifted as I pray for you. Father, you see these hands lifted. They have made genuine, sincere commitments. I pray that the Spirit of God that is our seal of redemption will be a witness to this spiritual transaction. And I pray in the name of Jesus that from tonight, let there be a new beginning. In the name of Jesus Christ, let there be a new beginning for every one of us. No going back to the world, no going back to the flesh by the power that raised Christ from the dead. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. A big congratulations to all of you. This is the best decision you would have made in your entire life. Hallelujah. Now, I'd like you to follow. Okay, this way, we're going to follow um, the ushers as they lead you. There'll be a group of people to have your names, your details, and we'll follow you up. They'll be very brief so that you come back and join us. Um, please be very fast with them because we're about to get um, to the ministrations right away. God bless you. Thank you for this great decision. Let's honor them. Koinonia, bless them. Bless them. Let's honor them as they go. Please rise up on your feet. We are going to pray for a few minutes. Hallelujah. We are about to pray for a few minutes. And I want our hearts to be open. Let's participate in the prayer. Hallelujah. Listen. When we pray, hear me, when we pray, we authorize heaven to step into our lives. Are we together? This is a miracle service and I want us to pray. Jeremiah 33 verse 3, please media help us. We're about to pray. We're about to pray. Jeremiah 33 verse 3. He says, call unto me and I will answer. Call on to me and I will answer. He says, and I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Call on to me. You see, prayer is a sign of humility because it's an indication that there is so much I do not know and there is so much I cannot do. Are we together? Prayer is a sign of humility. When you call on God to step into your life, it is because you acknowledge that he is able. Lift your voice in one minute and say, Lord, I know you are able. Lift your voice. Come on, pray, pray, pray. We are praying, please. Open your mouth and pray. Lord, I believe you are able. That's why I'm here tonight. I believe you are able to heal that cancer, to heal that HIV. Lord, I believe that you are able to give me a new story. I acknowledge you, I recognize you as the mighty God. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You are the mighty God. 
the great I am. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. He is the mighty God. You are the great I am. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. You are the mighty God. The great I am. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Self t i m e in the name of Jesus. Shout it! Say in the name of Jesus. Tonight, I declare that every force tying down my life, tying down my destiny, tying down my progress, you come under arrest tonight. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Shabakata la b a k a r i a la, mambra kata la kresta da ba la da ba. Oh, come on, koinoni, are you praying? Every force, shabakata laba karya laba laba, mandeka praska barata kareto supa, shekete prete kele ba 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 ba, rakata barato soto prete kele bele bo, embra kata la kate seketa ba. Shekepras kabarata labadash. Oh, you come under arrest tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, "I set before you this day blessing and cursing, life and death." But he says, "I advise you choose life so that you and your family." Will live. I like you to say in the name of Jesus. I make a decision tonight. I make a choice tonight that I must leave this place free. I like you to open your mouth and mention the challenges that brought you here and say, "I am determined. I make a decision." I make a decision. Shekete karaba bakaratos, rekete prekete le koto soto ba. I make a decision. I make a decision. I make a decision. Are you praying? Shabara kata la ba, mambra kata la kata. I make a decision. I make a decision. Please pray. Make sure you are praying. I make a decision. I must walk out of here healed tonight. I must walk out of here changed tonight. Hallelujah. Self t i m e in the name of Jesus. Shout it in the name of Jesus. Every covenant orchestrated by darkness to keep me limited in life, to keep my family limited in life. Tonight, I declare that this is my night of victory. Lift your voice and cry, 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 cry unto the God of your salvation. Se p r e k e t e t e karaba b a b a r a b a b a k a p r a t a k a l a b a t e s h They must be broken. They must be broken. I contend. I contend by faith. I contend. I contend by faith.
Alleluia. Alleluia. The Bible says, And Abraham was old and well stricken in age, and God had blessed him in all things. I'd like you to pray and say, Every area that is not working, say it every area in my life that is not producing results to now you come under the influence of the anointing lift your voice and begin to pray your finances may not be working your spiritual life may be working Oh, you are praying your, to a new dimension of God. Your Majesty, Your Majesty, Your Majesty, Your Majesty, Your Majesty, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Listen to the instruction the Lord is giving me. Please listen. Let's walk together, guys. Please, let's walk together. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are going to shout three times. Listen. Hallelujah. Because what I see in the realm of the spirit is like I'm standing on top of this building and I'm seeing like a pot boiling, but it's about to tilt. That's what I'm saying. And the Lord is telling me that at the third shout, we are going to shout once, shout two. By the third shout, listen, the first thing that will happen, by the time we take that third shout, there will be such an explosion of the power of God, a mighty deliverance anointing. And that's how we are going to start off tonight. Are we together? It's called the healer. It's a mystery. It's a mystery that crumbles walls. When they went round the walls of Jericho, they shouted. The instrumentalists, everybody together. Hallelujah. Just be stupid enough to obey this instruction. And watch the God of wonders do mighty things in your life. You are shouting pain away. You are shouting sickness away. You are shouting captivity away. Hallelujah. My goodness, I'm telling you, the power of God is so strong in this place. Mighty, 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 mighty. I'm going to count three. When I count three, listen, I want you to shout from the depth of your heart. Hallelujah. And then the second time we are going to shout, listen, as surely as the God of heaven lives, by the third shout, in the name of the Lord God whose I am and who has sent me, the wonders that will happen in your life by this third shout, is a mystery brothers and sisters how God operates are you ready one two three hallelujah hallelujah Please, all those under the anointing, just bring them out. But really, it's from the third time. Are you ready for number two? 
was shouting powers out of men's destinies was shouting thrones dominions that have tied down the lives of men are you ready one two three Hallelujah. Now be sensitive. Oh, I feel it on me. Here it comes. That grace. That unction. That grace. That unction. By the third shout, hear me. Angels will begin to move in dramatic ways. There will be an eruption of the power of God inside and outside. Are you ready? I make a decree in the realm of the spirit and I pray according to the word of the Lord as we make this shout I command thrones I command dominions I command altars and everything tying the destinies of men to give way in the name of the Lord Jesus are you ready now one two three mighty things happening to men already I tell you it's like volcano that's what I see in the spirit falling on people falling on people you baby of the prophetic the mantle of the prophetic 21 people that's what I see 21 people right now oh God in the name of Jesus wherever they are at the count of three let that mantle fall on them 21 one two three take it take it take it new wine take it Prophetic mantle. Prophetic mantle. Prophetic mantle. I call it forth. I call it forth. I call it forth. Mantles. Twenty one people. Stepping into prophetic anointings by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost, I activate it. I activate it. I activate it. I stand on the I activate it. the realm of the spirit the Lord is opening my eyes 
and I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit so many people having their hands tied with chains that's what I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit chains this is a spirit of limitation lift your hands everyone I want to take authority over this spirit wherever you are inside and outside I like you to get ready if you are in this category something will happen to you let the sword of the spirit part those chains open are you ready I command the chains be broken now be broken now be broken now be broken now broken now there's a family God is liberating a whole family they are here I'm seeing God touch them right now giving them miracles hallelujah lift your voice in one minute and say Lord speak to me speak to me send a word that will bring me hope Send a word. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm hearing the name Memuna. We have to rush. I'm hearing the name Memuna. Is there someone with that name here? Memuna. That's what I'm hearing. Shabakoto Paratoya. Memuna. Outside. Who is that? Memuna, you are outside. Who is that? Come. Look at me. Where are you coming from? Huh? I'm looking at you. Listen, look at me. You just came from somewhere here. Huh? Is there a, a mic? I'm looking at you. And I'm seeing you enter transport. And you are coming from Abuja to come here. Where did you come from? From Abuja. From Abuja. That's where you are coming. Because I look in the realm of the spirit. And I'm seeing you in a car. And you came and I'm seeing you praying and asking God to visit you and visit your family. Is that why you are here? Yes. Your family. You were saying if only you come here, God will visit your family. And God is saying he's bringing a breakthrough to Memuna and her family. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I break that curse over your family. By the power of the Holy Ghost, it lives forever. Lift your hands and give Jesus praise. Lift your hands and give Jesus praise. Lift your hands and give Jesus praise. Look at me. Please call the lady again. My dear, where is your mother? Uh, what's she doing? She's at home. Uh, She's a civil servant. She's a civil servant. We have to pray because the devil wants to put sickness. She's complaining of pains in her body. She went to the hospital. Uh, she may not have told you. She went to the hospital last week and they said she should be careful because she's having problems with her back yes. is that true yes. that's what the doctor said that she's having problem with her back yes. this is witchcraft it's ah. not just pain like that your mother cannot even watch for 10 minutes her yes. back will start paining yes. her yes. in the name of jesus christ we pray for mama right now wherever she is let there be a supernatural miracle for her in the name of the lord jesus christ in the name of the lord jesus christ madam can i talk to you please Yes, that madam, that one with, um, yes, please. Make sure you are praying. God is touching people. We just want to be fast. I wish we had time. No, 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 you don't have to kneel down. Please stand up. Where are you coming from, madam? From Jigawa, Jigawa State. Jigawa State. Yes. I'm looking at you and in the realm of the spirit I'm seeing a woman who has gone through pain and she's crying and I'm wondering why are you going through all of this uh, some of them I may not be able to say it here 
but you were invited here I'm with my sister. that's what I'm my saying where is she? I'm seeing two people where is the sister come come and stand hold on I'm hearing the Lord speak to me and saying there are two other people there are two other people again yes. that you came with aside from you where are they yeah, yeah. where are they two other people where are they please come and stand i want to announce to you all of you that god will give you a testimony tonight that will surprise you please i want you to believe i want you to believe me the things I see I may not be able to tell you right now because um, one of you has a problem with your husband I don't want to go into hold on I should I talk do you want me to talk calm down let me talk to you, you cannot, let me talk madam please look at me your husband needs deliverance you believe what I'm saying you love God you are a sincere woman but your husband needs deliverance huh where is he? I'm looking at you and I'm seeing a woman crying. A man coming to vomit. Mm. Huh? Like I might vomit from drunkenness. Mm. And then this thing is telling on you. Huh? Are you a Christian? You love the Lord. I'm seeing you praying for this woman. Yes. Huh? Yes. That's why I asked her, how do I know you are wearing something? I'm seeing you praying for her. Yes, In fact, sir. even when you stood there, you are saying that God should locate this woman yes, and sir. bless her. Yes, I'm hearing sir. your prayers. The Lord is ministering it to me and he's saying you should bless her. And the Lord God of heaven is saying he's going to bless her and bless you too. Hold on. Let me talk to you. Will you believe what I tell you? Why am I seeing you in a wedding gown? Are you married? Yes, sir. I'm seeing you in a wedding gown. Listen to me very carefully. And I'm seeing two men standing. Hold on. I'm seeing one man and I'm seeing another man. Yes, and the man is saying he married before this one. Yes. He comes to you in a dream. Yes, is that true? Yes, sir. This man I'm talking about. Yes, sir. Tell me the truth now. Don't be embarrassed. Yes, this has affected your marriage. Stand up. It's time to deliver you. Because I'm seeing you get married and I'm seeing two men. Your real husband and another one in the realm of the spirit. He comes to you in a dream. But the Lord is saying I should set you free. Elohim, you reign. You reign. You reign. Elohim, you reign. You reign. You reign. The Lord is showing me a lady. You left the hospital this morning. Your mother is in the hospital. It's part of the reasons why you came here. Please, who is that? Your mother, you left her in the hospital and you came here. Please, when you get that person, let me pray for her because God wants to do a miracle. I want to pray for you. The Bible says what God has joined, let no man put asunder. God did not join you and any spirit entity and he's going to deliver you in the name of jesus be free let her go now in the name of the lord jesus christ i speak to you by the power of the holy spirit madam please look at me your husband needs deliverance his own money finishes on friend and friends and beer is that true is that true, it's true. because i'm seeing him not only drink but buy him for his friends and they finish the entire money you are a very kind woman no. but the truth is he's not giving you even one naira you don't even get money from him but the lord is going to be changing things now let me tell you how it will change it will look as if it's getting worse but you watch and see what god is going to be doing you believe that yes i'm going to pray for you father in the name of jesus christ let there be a miracle a supernatural miracle a supernatural miracle a supernatural miracle there is a woman from Katsina. There is a woman from Katsina. 
a woman from Katsina that's what I'm seeing a woman you are outside you didn't cover your hair you are from Katsina where is that person is there someone like that please where is that person why are you clapping where's the person please come from Katsina look at me stand up stand up madam stand up your time of breakthrough has come look at me the Lord is saying I should quote a scripture for you when the Lord again shall turn your captivity he says you'll be like them that day madam you have cried enough in this miracle service the God of heaven is about to wipe your tears Mary Mary who is Mary 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 I know there are many Marys hold on please hold on let me call the Mary the Mary is in this row Mary you are seated here no 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 at the back you are wearing a dark cloth right here you didn't cover your head the Mary is in not like I don't know if it's a dark cloth like it has flower it's a gown it's a gown straight down gown not gown with skirt is there someone like that Mary this row the angel of the Lord is there is it a gown or someone I'm seeing something with flower is there someone like that please find out Mary I need to talk to that person I need to talk to that person you're the one okay well come I'll talk to you madam where are you from I'm from Akwaibo you are from Akwaibo I stayed in Katsina are you, are you married yes where is your husband it's in Katsina I have to pray for you God wants to give you victory my goodness lift your hands I'm telling you I just saw like a wind and the Lord said they are angels watch what happens in the congregation right now angels 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 bringing impartation to people I just saw like a wind in the spirit angels cutting away things that's what I'm seeing angels cutting away things from people they are removing things in people's bodies that's what I see like in a slimy substance leaving people this is breakthrough breakthrough God is giving people breakthrough hallelujah ma let me pray for you what do you do ma hallelujah hold on I'm looking at this woman don't be afraid correct me if I'm wrong I'm looking at you where is Kasham I'm looking at you ma and I'm seeing her name on your head and I was wondering and the Lord no 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 hold on come come I'm looking at this woman and, and I'm seeing the name of this lady Kasham on her head and I thought your name is Kasham but the Lord told me it's not Kasham the, what she's practicing is what you are now what what are you doing I'm a nurse what are you doing I'm a nurse you're a nurse that's what I'm seeing in the spirit that's what God is telling me because I'm looking at you and I saw her name written on your head and the Lord said I should call her and make see this is not diabolic Hosea chapter 12 it says I have spoken to you by the prophet I have multiplied visions he said I have spoken to you in similitudes this is not jamboree we have a lot of things to do God is locating people and when he's doing it for one he's doing it for many people time will not allow for everybody to be called but I just want you to believe believe in what God is doing in the name of Jesus Christ that's that's the that's the only reason why you are here ma I want to pray for you because I'm seeing the Lord promoting you and lifting you you believe that if God grants grace you will return and testify hold my hands ma in the name of Jesus Christ may the God of heaven promote you and lift you right now in the name of Jesus ma I want to pray for you where are you from please I'm from Anambra but I'm from Jigawa I want to pray for you what do you do nurse. I'm a nurse you are a nurse too yes. I want to pray for you the devil wants to put sickness in your body and this is not a nice this is not something I will even say the devil wants to put it in your body but will take authority over it right now please hold my hands man in the name of Jesus Lord he will fortify her I command that spirit to leave you right now out the 
devil wants to put sickness in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ ma look at me the pain is living and you are going free you have cried I have I'm seeing a woman who has cried but God is stepping in hold my hands in the name of Jesus Lord the grace that makes things happen may that grace bring this woman out of pain in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I want to pray for you come stand here I want to pray there's bad luck in your family eh? serious bad luck where's your father Quara State. Quara State. I'm seeing a man in Quara State just going around in circles, not even doing anything meaningful. We have to pray. It's one thing to move physically, but it's another thing for your life to move too. Huh? And I'm going to pray for you. You love Jesus. Please be very serious with the Lord. Hold my hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Emeka. Emeka. I'm hearing the name of someone. Emeka. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let there be a miracle for you let there be a miracle for you in the name of Jesus Emeka the Lord is ministering to me I'm hearing the name of someone Emeka the Lord is giving you a testimony in the name of Jesus Christ Emeka you are outside I'm seeing two Emeka coming I tell you I see like a screen one you have beard one you are wearing white Elohim, you reign, you reign, you reign. Elohim, you reign. Hallelujah. I'm seeing the spirit of death on you. Don't be, I'm not a prophet of doom, but I'm seeing the spirit of death on you. The devil wants to destroy your life. We have to pray for you. Sir, look at me. What do you do? You are a student. I'm going to pray for you. You love Jesus and the hand of God is upon your life. Huh? It's not just an ambition for business, but the anointing of God is in your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Sir, I need to pray for you. I need to pray for you and destroy something that wants to kill you. Huh? So it's just a simple prayer. I'll pray for you. Don't be afraid. I'm not, I'm, we're not prophesying doom. You get what I'm saying? In the name of Jesus Christ, I command that thing to leave you. In the name of Jesus Christ, that devil of darkness, it leaves you right now. Sir, hold my hands. I pray that the anointing of the Spirit will come upon your life right now. Step into a new level of grace by the power of the Holy Ghost. It's not by power, it's not by might. I bring an anointing to your life that takes you to a new dimension. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. There is a lady who is going to shout under the anointing. Just carry her like that and bring her to me. There is a word. No, it's inside here. It's not outside. Right here. Carry her like that and bring her. It's a message. Just carry her like that and bring her. This is what I see in the realm of the spirit. As she's lying down like this, that's what I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit. And I'm hearing Ezekiel 2, verse 2. It says, And the spirit entered me and set me upon my feet. The Lord is bringing not just deliverance to you and your family, but the Lord is bringing, I'm hearing the word restoration. And the Lord is saying, I should prophesy to you. Receive it in the name of Jesus. It comes upon you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Please bring this lady for me. Just, just carry her carefully if she can. Please lift your voice and pray and say, Lord, visit me. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I break every hold you have with her life. In the name of Jesus, I'm looking at a lady in the realm of the spirit and I'm seeing a spirit wearing a crown and the Lord is saying he's removing that crown. That's what I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit. This is a lady who loves God, but I see her connected to things that have to do with marine powers and I'm seeing the lady with a crown and the Lord is taking it in the name of Jesus Christ. 
I command freedom right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. I command freedom right now. Be free. Go. Let her go now by the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands. I want to pray. Before we pray for the sick, there's something the Lord is showing me. Please, I'd like you to lift your hands. Just do what I'm asking you to do. Lift your hands. The power of God is going to come on certain people. I'm seeing deliverance in families. This is not just you. You are standing for your loved ones. I'm seeing mighty deliverance is happening in families. And the Lord is saying, one more time, we should shout that name, Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. As we shout Jesus, I'd like you to shout all your heart. At the count of three. The moment you do that, I see deliverance coming to families. And what they could not do in many years will be done within one month. What they could not do in many years will be done within one month. In the name of Jesus. One, two, three. Right now. Deliverance. 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 Shakataba. Families. I command it inside and outside. Inside and outside. Deliverance. What could not be done in 10 years? In 10 years, it will be done in one month. What could not be done in 10 years will be done in one month. What could not be done in 10 years will be done in one month. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Say it in the name of Jesus. Every door stopping me from entering the next level. Right now, I command that door broken. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Pray yourself to the next dimension. Doors are opening. Pray inside and outside. Doors are opening. Doors are opening. Doors are opening. Hallelujah. 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 Listen, many of you may not understand what is happening in the realm of the spirit, but you see, the presence of God is where change happens in the life of men. Just like this, you will walk out and you will see things happen in your life. Just like this. There are chains that tie men. There are chains that hold down destinies. There are chains. Please bring this lady for me. Yes, this lady. Just this very lady. Just bring her. I give the chains for I give the chains, 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 I give the chains. There is power in the name of Jesus. Deliverance is coming for you. There is power. In the name of Jesus, there is power. In, in the name of Jesus, hey, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Shera bara da da ba de da da ba. To me, the Lord is giving me a word. I saw an eagle flying, and the eagle came and entered you. And the Lord is saying, I should tell you, He's restoring to you 
the spirit of prophecy that's what the lord is saying i should tell you he's restoring to you i saw an eagle fly and it entered you and the lord is saying he's restoring the spirit of prophecy 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 hallelujah i'm looking in the spirit and i'm seeing people carry load and god is saying i should bring down that load lift your hands lord where are they carrying loads that do not belong to them right now at the count of three let that load come off you right now one two three right now right now right now anyone carrying any load every load every load every load every load every load every load that is not of God every load that is not of God every load that is not of God must leave you must leave you must leave you must leave you hallelujah hallelujah before we are going to be very fast hallelujah i was walking and the lord said i should go back praise the lord please don't mind me just allow me to do what the lord is saying and the lord is saying i should walk right here outside right and go outside please hear me and the lord is saying as i walk for every road that i pass if there is a spirit holding your destiny it must leave you please believe me shake karababa i lift my hands right now right now as i'm passing the anointing of the spirit is touching people destroying yokes destroying yokes destroying yokes right now destroying yokes from my left and my right destroying yokes any spirit tying down any man's destiny right now 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 every spirit every spirit every spirit every spirit now listen to me those outside don't be afraid it will not rain but watch this lift your hands i'm going to walk this way and the power of the holy ghost you are enduring this rain as i walk through any spirit tie your life must give way right now are you ready right now right now right now right now right now i release everybody from bondage 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 right now i stretch my hands i stretch my hands i stretch my hands right now i stretch my hands i stand by an anointing as i pass your role any devil tying you will let you go right now as i pass your role as i as i as i pass your role as i pass your role now right responsible for your limitation you are enduring the rain you cannot go back the same i came out to join you hallelujah please make sure you pray I'm moving around. We are going to pray for you. Please lift your hands. Make sure you are praying. There's no spirit that will stand. Hallelujah. 
as many who can come in don't worry just push them in i know it will be a bit stuffy but push as many people everywhere and let's pray we have to hurry up just push them as many there are some who may not be able to do much but then we are praying we are praying say after me in the name of jesus say it again in the name of jesus every power holding me say it again in the name of jesus every power holding my breakthrough tonight your time is up go 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 lift your voice and pray pray every power every force hallelujah now hold on i know that there are so many people coming in just give them room to come in just make every adjustment not all may be able to come in but it's a sacrifice it's a sacrifice it's a sacrifice we want to pray for the sick now now please be careful so we don't have people marching on people hallelujah we are going to do two things at the same time all those who came trusting god for healing now is your time please walk with the protocol walk with the ushers i'm going to ask you to come out and stand here don't match the people in front while they are doing that ushers begin to pass your prayer request begin to pass your prayer request there are miracles in the name of Jesus there are breakthroughs in the name of Jesus there is healing in the name of Jesus to break every chain break every chain Break every chain. Power to break every chain. Break every chain. I sense a strong healing anointing. A strong healing anointing entering this building. Break every chain. 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 hallelujah now we're going to minister to the sick please hear me no matter what the situation is as you stand right here i want you to believe god for healing you've heard the testimonies of people you've seen the things that god is doing in this place don't make the place rowdy just be orderly as we pray for you just a touch and you return back we may not have the time to take testimonies hallelujah please say to me you will join me where's pastor jakes i'm glad to have them around and they'll make this work easy the anointed people as we pray for you i want you to believe god for healing the moment you are prayed for as you walk back to your seat do what you couldn't do before don't just sit down and hope you are healed the bible says they came to hear and to be healed they came to hear and to be healed everyone lift your hands in one minute and pray and say every sickness in my body is time for you to go every incurable disease go ahead and pray every incurable disease you are living hallelujah worship team you help us while we minister pastor Jakes me please we are going to pray for you in the name of the lord jesus i want you to believe in the god that heals in the name of jesus thank you heavenly father make sure you are praying in tongues don't just be whiling away time drop your prayer request and be praying pray in the spirit and say lord you are going to visit me there 
There's power in the name Stretch of Jesus. Now, to break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, this, I consider these sessions to be the most powerful. I know that you have to be a man of the Spirit to understand all these things. The word of knowledge, ministering to the sick, is very important. But sincerely, there is only so much. Are we together? There's only so much. There are thousands of people here, and there is only so much you can see. These represents the prayer request of so many people and there are so many others um, online and this is when we get to give God chance to reveal himself as a God of wonders hallelujah our time is spent but I want you to make sure that you participate we're going to pray on this right now and then afterwards um, I'm going to prophesy over our lives then we'll take a few announcements and we'll be done. I want you to maximize the night so that you don't go back and return the same. Hallelujah. Before I pray, I, I want, if you can rise, please rise. Those on, under the anointing, that's all right. And then mothers with children, that's all right. But the rest of us, please, let's rise and take this very seriously. We're going to be praying right now. Pastor Jakes and Ejimi are done. They can come and join us. We'll pray. Pastor Godwin, where are you? Please, can you come and join us? Um, we're going to pray. I'd like you to stretch your hands here and in one minute pray like your life depends on it and say the same way I have dropped this. That's how I've dropped every challenge in my life. I'd like you to pray. Please pray. Koinonia, open your mouth. Inside, outside, online, please join us. We're going to lay our hands prophetically on this request as we lay our hands on them we are releasing the power of God to every home to every territory in the name of the Lord Jesus make sure you pray from the depth of your heart father we agree with you we agree with you all kinds of miracles Impossible situations. Make sure you are praying. There is a God that answers prayers. Let fire fall on this request to God. Shakata prakata kataka. Rekata kataka kataka bosh. Maprakata prosoto bosh. Elekata prakata perekoto soprata kataka daba. Mata shata taka taka daba daba bosh. Pray, prophesy. We are speaking over this request. Wipe the tears of people, oh God. Visit individuals. Visit families. Strange miracles. Strange miracles. In Dalukos, Ita Dada, they looked unto you and they were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. Shame is taken away totally and completely. Ah, the embargo is lifted. Latoka Suda Brakilamosh. Ah, 
ah, I hear God saying, affliction shall not arise again the second time. Allah, it is done it is done says the spirit of God it is done oh glory be to God go ahead and rejoice and give God praise hallelujah 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 please lift your hands and receive the prophecy this is where God is going to be changing life Hallelujah. Your destiny can change overnight because one word was received. Prophecy does not only reveal, it creates. This is where everybody gets to participate in the service. Take it higher, guys. Inside, outside. This is where I want you to believe. You will rise in his name. I don't know. You reign. You will rise in your name. I don't know. You reign. You in his name hallelujah three weeks ago I had a very serious encounter with God and the Lord told me something he said I have put my word in your mouth as you speak it I will make it happen that's what the Lord told me Please, I want you to believe it. Oh, blessed is she that believes. Don't sit down and doubt and waste your time. There is a spiritual dimension to life. It's not just, I have taught you principles. Believe me when I tell you there is a spiritual dimension. Gates and doors over the lives and the destinies of men. I pray every gate that must be open right now I speak to you Efata be open now be open now be open now be open now open now be open now that chain tying any man's destiny tying the speed of your progress you are moving but you are not making impact right now I release upon you an auction for speed an auction take it an auction for speed an auction for speed the bible says and the hand of the lord please help them the hand of the lord came upon elijah he gathered his loins and ran on barefoot he overtook the chariots of ahab down to israel i don't know what you have done from january to now but i prophesy from now till the end of June, do what you have not done in five years. Shake it, 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 it. Do what you have not done in five years. Do what you have not done in five years. Hallelujah. Jacob dug a well and they covered it. They dug another one. They covered it. They dug the third one and they left it and they called it Rehoboth. They said, God has given us our space. Where you have been begging for relevance, it's like there is no place for you in life. It's like there is no place. I stand 
under this apostolic and prophetic mantle take your place in life take your place in destiny take your place in ministry take your place in destiny take your place in ministry whatever has covered your glory whatever has covered your glory I stand tonight I invoke the powers of the heavens and I command let your glory be released now be released now be released now anyone here called jobless between now and the next two months I don't care what is the reason but I pray as surely as the God of heaven lives we give you a job here now we give you a job here now we give you a job here now it says to appoint unto them that morning sign listen there are some of us you are making progress but no help in your life you fight for everything by yourself you pay for everything by yourself when you are in trouble there's nobody to speak for you at the gates where are your helpers who stopped them from entering your life who said it must be this hard i go down on my knees i call your helpers by prophecy in the name of jesus from the north to the south to the east to the west from the north to the south to the east to the west from the north to the south to the east to the west receive of their ministry listen let me tell you there is nothing more tragic as having no helper no man can stand alone you need voices to speak to you at the gates of destiny you need men to endorse you and say help him you can't have to explain yourself to everybody who is speaking for you i pray again whoever must appear in your life from now till june business helpers financial helpers marital helpers Career help us. I call you for. I call you for. Hallelujah. Listen, lift your hands. There are some of you, your dreams and visions used to be opportunities for intense revelation where God will show you secrets. It made your life easy till something shot you from visions and dreams. I pray every dead dream life every dead manifestation of visions like a mantle receive restoration now restoration of dreams prophetic dreams visions prophetic vision hallelujah Please stretch your hands towards me please stretch your hands towards me the hands of a man represent your responsibility represents your wisdom represents your agency for bread I pray for you whatever has mocked the creativity of your hands so that your potentials are underutilized Isaiah 48 verse 17 I am the Lord that teaches thy hands to profit I pray the grace that makes your hand productive take it now take it now take it now take it now the grace that makes your hand multiply take it now everything called barren in your destiny physical barrenness spiritual barrenness academic barrenness 
career barrenness right now I cause the spirit of barrenness from his root and I command be fruitful be fruitful be fruitful hallelujah lift your hands in the next one minute I want us to pray because everyone will receive something listen listen what we're all receiving is an upgrade of grace listen he said grace be multiplied grace and peace be multiplied the grace upon a man's life can multiply should multiply must multiply there are three things that happen to you when God lifts you one he multiplies your grace two he adds to your responsibility three he increases your territory of influence both spiritually and physically I pray for you lift your hands some of us you have not backslidden but you've not risen beyond certain levels you have stayed there at a level everything that is alive grows please I want you to receive I told you this meeting will have impartations the impartation is not falling on the ground and rolling impartation is receiving something tangible in your spirit hallelujah Paul said I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift he said to the end that he be established I pray for you lift your hands every grace that is dormant in your life every grace that is useful but it has stayed at a level and is made no matter how you try to rise it stands there in the name of Jesus by the privilege of the apostolic office I pray for you may that grace be upgraded now receive it receive it take it an upgrade of favor an upgrade of wisdom an upgrade of power fire power fire fire prayer fire what fire prayer fire what fire an upgrade of supernatural wisdom an upgrade of access access to men of influence I pray for you listen what your current level of grace could not bring you into I empower you to go back and conquer that realm oh let me repeat what I'm saying there are levels in life and there are graces that are like keys you can get to a level and be stuck there no matter what kind of deliverance you can stay there because graces are like flights they can take you beyond certain levels some of us just need a little upgrade to overcome the obstacles you have tried prayer has brought you so far I pray for you whatever dimension must be added so that you can fly like the eagle that you are receive that dimension now receive that dimension now receive that dimension now hallelujah the bible says and you shall be called with a new name which the mouth of the lord shall speak it says you shall be called Hefziba and Pula, a well desired land i pray for you everything that makes people run away from you they plan to help you but when they come they change their mind they plan to bless you but when they see you they consider what they are about to sow there is a spirit that cut short breakthroughs I pray for you in the name of Jesus I pray the blessing that was prophesied he said to Jacob the smell of my son is like the field that the Lord has blessed that aura that attracts favor receive it right now receive it right now whoever has said over his dead body 
for you to rise. May that prayer be answered. Let me say it again. Whoever vowed and said it is through his dead body you will rise. I said may that prayer be answered. Listen. The Bible says in five things the Lord will deliver you. He said yes six. He will deliver you from the scourging tongues of men. It was a revelation that was given Job. That men stay and use their tongues to trap the destinies of men. I pray for you. Whoever has used his tongue like a net to trap your life, I release you right now. I release you right now. I release you right now. Hallelujah. The kind of finances your hands has not touched, I pray for you. Between now and the end of this month, may God do something that must bring tears from your eyes. May God do something that must bring tears from your eyes. May God do something that must bring tears from your eyes. Anyone here marked for death, that death is eyeing you, waiting for the day you will get on the road, waiting for the day a bike will come close to you to kill you and take your life. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. We forbid the earth from receiving your body. We forbid the earth from receiving your body. There are five elements I'm rounding up that are the conduits through which the supernatural finds expression on earth. Five elements all through scripture. The supernatural cannot manifest on earth without the instrumentality of these five elements. Number one is light. God is light. The entrance of thy word give it light. Let there be light. Number two, water. The fish and the birds of the air in Genesis came out of water. Water represents abundance. Number three, fire. Hallelujah. It's a mysterious instrument, not threatened by any other element, yet refines every other. Number four, wind. The mystery of sound. The mystery that takes sounds and realities. He said, I prophesied as I was commanded and there was a sound. That sound came back in Acts chapter 2. A sound. Hallelujah. And the last element is the earth. The prophet said, O earth, hear ye the word of the Lord. He said, For from dust thou art, and to dust thou shalt return. Hear me. I want to pray just one deep mystery for you. The earth is a universal point of contact. Every man makes contact with it. For you to be alive, you must make contact with the earth. Your feet must touch the ground. Your helper's feet is touching this ground you are touching. No, 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 no. It's not amen. It's a mystery. The office where you are to be employed is on this ground. It's not in the air. Hear me, please. The bank that holds the favor you are looking for has contact with this earth. And the prophet said, O oh, earth, you are a living thing. You are not just stones. Hallelujah. Are we together? Hmm. It says they will not be able to oppress you because you have made a covenant with the stones. I pray for you. Whoever wants to disfavor you, just like the stars fought for Deborah, may the earth fight for you. May the earth fight for you. Quarter to shame. May a mystery manifest that you don't understand to bail you out. Listen, when men say, let's see what will become of him. I pray a mystery, my goodness, another way. May God bring another mystery and deliver you in the name of Jesus. The heat and the turmoil in Nigeria. We love our nation. We pray for them. And we pray sincerely out of a sense of nationhood. But I pray for you. The mystery of exemption that can exempt a man. It says for when men say there is a casting down. 
for you you will say there is a lifting up i prophesy a lifting up regardless of the recession this is still your year of multiplied grace hallelujah lift your hands and give god thanks thank him sincerely Lord, we thank you for your word. Listen, I want you to go back realizing what happened to you. Don't be like the man who looks at himself at the mirror and leaves and forgets. These prophecies have come upon you like a mantle. You enforce them in the place of prayer. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.